On this episode of DPV, we're getting my 1969 Chevy Impala started for the first time in seven years. Alright, I'm officially home. Super excited to start this next series on my 1969 four-door hardtop Impala, known as the Ghetto Glider. So on their hood, we get a small block Chevy, 350 board 30 over, so it's a 355. We've got the Edelbrock Performer package on it. The uh, Edelbrock Performer intake, got an Edelbrock Performer cam, um, Edelbrock carb, and then of course the Elite Series dress-up kit. Along with, uh, you know, a bunch of leaves and crap. Got some uh, Dynamax headers. That's pretty much it under the hood. So one of the first things I'm gonna need to do since this thing's been sitting so long is pull the carb, clean it out, drain all the fuel out, and uh, you know, clean out the fuel lines, make sure all there's none of that garbage in there, and put some new fuel in it and see if we can fire it up. Also, I robbed the alternator off this thing for the big chief, and then that alternator ended up burning up. Um, so, gonna have to get an alternator. The budget I have right now, it's gonna be a pull and save alternator, but hopefully I can find one off the caddy or something with a little more amperage. Ooh, looks like I got some resonance over the last seven years. Got the B&M Mega Shifter. Pretty fun. Back to drive. Second, first, then when you want to shift up, second, drive. And uh, also got the BM Stage 2 shift kit in the transmission. Back in the day, I was able to get this thing to, you know, bark the tires in, in between shifts, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to have the same power or not. Some of you might be wondering why the heck would I fix up a four door? Well, I got two reasons. One, this thing's been in my family a long time. I actually came home from the hospital when I was born in this car. So it's been in my family for about, you know, 35 years. My dad fixed it up right before um, I was born. It was in this uh, kind of red color, just gorgeous with Kragers. And then, you know, a whole lifetime of uh, it being a family rig. And then I got it when I was 14 and uh, cruised it all through high school, did a few upgrades like the engine, um, transmission, a couple other things. So it's just been around a while and I love it. it. I've got a ton of memories in this car. And the other thing is, yes, it's a four door, but it's a four door hard top. Check this out. When the windows are down, it is wide open. It is, oh man, it's awesome. With the windows down cruising, uh, the wind just blows in there. It's a ton of fun. That's why I'm fixing up the floor. Don't even know what's in here. Nothing important. It is huge in there though. Now I'd love to make this thing my daily driver. With five passenger seats plus the driver, both my kids can each take a friend. My wife can sit right here, you know, in the middle of the bench seat. We go cruising take people to soccer games. Uh, we can go buy groceries. Got that huge trunk. So, yeah, it's a four-door. So easy access to the back seat. I take driving this over your Dodge Caravan with the stone go any day of the week. A couple other things I got going for this. I had a parts car that had disc brakes. So I, bought, I got all those parts. We're gonna swap the drums out for discs in the front. Got a set of 373 gears for the rear end and an extra housing, so we're gonna build a 12 volt, hopefully with a Detroit True Track. We'll see. If you guys have any experience with 12 volt posies and you got one that you really like, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And then, you know, just complete go through on maintenance because it has been sitting for seven years. This episode, we're gonna try to get this thing started. All right, just got back from pull and save. Got myself an alternator. Let's go get it installed. All right, should be 
fairly simple. Here's the wiring I gotta plug into. We're gonna put the alternator right about there. All right, now that that's installed, we're gonna see if we can get the motor to turn over a little bit. So I'm gonna pull the spark plugs, squirt a little oil on there, and crank it over by hand. Should turn over fairly easy. Hasn't been sitting that long. So that's a good sign. Um, now we'll see if we can get this fuel system cleaned out. There's the mechanical fuel pump. It, this is the line that feeds the pump from the tank. So I'm going to tie into that with the electric fuel pump and try to drain out the tank and pull the carb and clean it. fuel pump hooked on there got a battery that I'll clamp it to gas can to drain it in all right so there's only about five gallons of gas in the car so that's good got it all drained out um, while I was draining the gas I Cleaned up the spark plugs a little bit with the, just a wire brush. Um, so I'll put those back in and pull that carburetor, try to clean it out a little bit. thing might end up needing to be rebuilt but for now I'm just going to try to clean it out let's get it clean enough to run and uh, play around a little bit and go from there Got the battery in, fuel system cleaned up. Let's see what happens. All right, let's try this again. All right, so I left the charger on it overnight. Let's try this one again. All right, so it seems like the starter solenoid is sticking. I'm gonna try to pull that starter out and uh, we'll see if I can get it unstuck, get this thing running. All right, so got the starter out. Um, gonna pull this, pull this solenoid off and try to clean it out. It might be corroded a little bit. I think that's why it's sticking. This part seems to move just fine, so um, I'm just going to pull the solenoid off and see if there's any dirt or junk or corrosion in there. Try to get this thing spinning.
All right, I think this is gonna be it. So we're gonna put a little splash of gas in the carburetor and see what happens. Never mind. Red solo cups do not hold gas. Holy crap. Alright, we'll just see it this way. Alright. Oil pressure. The temp gauge doesn't work. Can't seem to keep it running. It won't idle. So I might have to. Oop, that was a little bit much. Might have to rebuild the carb, but at least it runs. Look at that, it's idling. Man, I can't even tell you how excited I am about getting this thing running. First start in seven years. She likes to be um, on the camera too. Uh, out of the carb with just pulling the, the top off. The gaskets look pretty good, but I think I should be able to blow it all the way apart, clean it real good with, you know, some pipe cleaners or something and brake clean. Not necessarily have to buy a rebuild kit. The rebuild kits for these Edelbrocks are about a hundred bucks. So uh, we'll, we'll try that, get it running a little better, change all the fluids, and uh, try to do some burnout. So thank you for watching this video. Like always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.